Nina Love, thank you so much for joining me here on tonight. Um, I, my name is Drian Santana over here at Hip Hop Weekly. I will be conducting this interview with you on this evening, this night, even though it feel like it's 11 o'clock, but it's only eight my time, but nine your time. So <laughs> how are you doing? I'm well. I'm doing well. I'm working, getting rest, like doing both. So I'm doing pretty well. Okay, cool. So the pandemic hasn't slowed you down like at all. Oh no, yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely has. Um, especially like lockdown and everything. Like mm -hmm. I definitely was one of those people that got like really depressed and like trying to figure out what to do with myself, like not being on stage and mm -hmm. um also like the riots and everything and just, just so much on the internet, like just really mm -hmm. like took a toll on me so I definitely took a break but I think over the summer um I was able to like you know get myself back into my groove so I'm doing okay now you're a native of Harlem New York what was it like growing up in Harlem um fun <laughs> <laughs> really fun um you ever seen like that meme where it's like I like to do hood rat things with my friends mm -hmm. that's what like <laughs> Harlem is like it's that vibe like you get to just and like do you and just you know um coming where we coming where I'm from like you are being tackled by so many things like fashion and music and the food here in New York like just it's a lot to like you know it's a lot that we have in our culture so it's just fun to be from here and like grow up here so what would you say was is was your, like your favorite thing to do as a kid my favorite thing to do as a kid was um, I used to play. So I'm the only girl of like 10 boys. So mm -hmm. I used to play. Um, yeah, <laughs> we used to play manhunt a lot. We used to like like I was just always with the guys. Like I was just mm -hmm. always with my guy friends, always running around and just like being careless, like not really thinking too much about anything. So music and dance was a very, very, was a big part of your life as a kid growing up, but your mom kept you in, you know, dance classes, kept you moving, doing something creative. Um, I think that was pretty, pretty dope. Um, you did attend like a lot of performance art schools. How would you say attending those schools hold you into your artistry? Um, I feel like every place that I like studied, um, just gave me like another strike, like another tiger strike. Like, okay, um, you learn you learn different things, especially when you're working with different people, different races. Um, whether you're leveling up or you you come back down a little bit to humble yourself. Like, I've really been in and out of like all kinds of schools, and I feel like it taught me a lot about hard work and being persistent and um, being able to go into different environments and take what you already know and learn new things. Um, one of my favorite things that I've learned the most, one of, one of my favorite things is I actually used to take etiquette classes with my dance school and we had like a whole cotillion, like the ball gown and everything. And it just taught us what it meant to be a lady, what it meant to have class, how to be poise and all of those kind of things. And then with being a ballet dancer, that helps also. So not only did it help me perform better, but it helped me, you know, just with my mannerisms, how I speak to people, how I approach people, um, things like that. So when did you decide that you wanted to, you know, pick up a pen and start creating music? Um, I was really big on like, as a child, mm -hmm. I've always been an emotional, like I was an emotional kid, not like a crybaby or anything. Like I was always laughing as a kid, but um, I was very in tune with my emotions. Like, and I would just write everything down. Like I was really heavy into poetry and my grandma, she loved poetry as well. So I would just write. And then when I noticed that I could sing, um, I was like, okay, write a song. But you know, it, should, it can't be that hard. Like you do poetry, you can sing, it can't be that hard. Right. So that's what I started doing. Like I would have my little notebook songs and stuff. And then and my iPhone, like I write songs and my notes. And um, I wasn't really recording yet. Like I was just writing stuff. I never thought, let me not say I never thought I'd be a singer, but it just wasn't, mommy, I want to be a singer when I grow up. Like, it wasn't that. Like, it was never that. Um, 
I had dreams of being a lawyer and things like that. So, um, yeah, when I noticed I could sing, that's when I started songwriting. Do you think you ever kind of go to school to be a lawyer or anything? Oh, yeah, absolutely. When my kids are grown and they go to college or they decide to have kids and get married and I have free time and I'm retired from singing, absolutely. <laughs> I will definitely be back in school. Awesome, awesome. So so with your father, you know, everybody know who he is. He's a legendary DJ, Kid Capri. Um, I noticed that in one of your interviews you did with uh, We TV when you was on Growing Up Hip Hop in New York, you did his little tagline or whatever and you said that he'll love that you actually did that for him um you know like a lot of a lot of kids who you know grow up with uh, well-known parents sometimes that kind of shadows them from being truly who they are do you feel that you ever had to deal with something like that growing up with your father being kid capri I didn't deal with it because I like nipped it in the butt as soon as they like <laughs> like as soon as I decided to have a career I'm like okay I got to come out swinging because the first thing they're going to do is say, oh, she's kid's daughter. Of course, she's going to have a career. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so I just that was like my main goal from the and like, I'm not going to lie. It kind of caused like tiny friction between me and my dad because he felt like, OK, why don't you want my help? Why don't you want me to do this? And X, Y and Z. And I'm just like, it's not that I don't want your help. I don't need it. That's first and foremost. What would I do if you weren't? My That's exactly how I have to live my life. I have to be able to go work hard and, and learn certain kind of things. And I need to be as efficient as you are in your career. So that was a turning point for us in our relationship. Definitely like um, leveled up our father-daughter relationship. But mm -hmm. it wasn't easy though. I definitely, um, I was not trying to hit the girl. They was not about to put me in no box. <laughs> so I came out fighting like I'm going to that's that. So let's talk about you being on Growing Up Hip Hop in New York. What was that experience like for you being on the show? It was definitely different. I remember doing interviews like saying, oh, I'll never do reality TV. I'll <laughs> never like live that kind of life. And I, I used to be a huge fan of reality TV, like from throwback, Wave of Love and like um, all the way up into lo Love and Hip Hop and Growing Up Hip Hop and all those, on the, all those shows. So um, I just always felt it wasn't for me. Um, when we TV approached us, they actually reached out for about a year. Uh, we took a meeting and they were just like, look, it's going to be a family show. We're not trying to uh, ruin anybody's life here. Mm -hmm. And that was very true. But at the same time, it is a TV show. They still need ratings. It's really not about how they feel. It's about the viewers. It's about how they feel and what they want to see and the drama they want to see. So um, I understood that they needed their respective drama. Mm -hmm. um, however, I'm still human. I have a career and me reacting to something on TV could follow me for the rest of my life. I could right. become a liability to someone. I could become somebody that uh, people don't want to work with because they think I'm rowdy because of something I reacted to on TV. Mm -hmm. I think it was good for me in terms of... Um, people getting to see my face and like hearing my name, even if they never like listened to my music, they heard the name. So that's, that's, I'll take that. Like, that's great. Would you ever, you know, go back um, to the season of growing up in hip hop New York or would you like kind of dead the whole reality TV thing? It depends. Um, I'm now my own boss. I'm now, um, I'm in a better position than I was before when I was on the show. So I would definitely like to renegotiate a lot of things. But um, if not that, I'm okay with not going back to the show. I feel like I have a lot of things, you know, in store, a lot of things that I have to uncover to all my supporters. So if I don't go back to the show, it's not a huge loss to me. Mm -hmm. um, if I do go back to the show, it just has to be under different terms. So we will get into you being, you know, your own boss, you being like the first young black person like female in the industry right now who has her own label you know let's talk about that congratulations on it as well because not too many people your age are doing that right now so let's talk about it uh what made you want to you know start your own label Mo a lot of reasons um first and foremost um i have this thing about working hard 
and having to answer to someone else or pay someone else for it. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing. If I'm going to work hard, I want it to be on my terms, under my creativity, under my judgment, um, and under my hard work. I want to be able to build an empire off of everything that I've learned because it took me a lot to get to where I am. And I'm only 24. So if I could take what I've learned and instill it into some other women or some other young men who are interested, I feel like that's just a bunch of power in its own. Um, Beyond that, I also felt like everybody wants a deal. Um, Everybody wants some kind of deal. Somebody, everybody wants some kind of backing to help them with their career, help them push their career. And a lot of artists end up running into these situations where they're signing over everything. They're giving a label everything and then they have nothing in the end or they're working extremely hard and they see nothing for it. I didn't wanna be that person. I didn't wanna have a regular deal. I didn't wanna have a mediocre deal. I wanted to make sure that if I was going into something, I would be able to be the boss, be my boss. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what made me start my label. Mm 